Molly, it's Sagey and today I will be talking about some of the books that I received over the past couple of months. So yeah, let's start. The first one I received was a collection of long form essays and short stories edited by Ledette Randolph, uh, Plowshares and Emerson College gifted me a copy. They found me on Instagram and they said we love your Instagram account and uh, so <laughs> they, they asked if they could uh, send me um, their latest issue and I say yes. So um, thank you very much uh, for this copy. Now this has both fiction and non-fiction and and, uh, they gave me a little card as well suggesting some uh, stories so uh, that was super kind of them and I'm really excited uh, to try this book out. The next book is the debut novel of Meng Jing called Little Gods. On the night of the Tiananmen Square massacre, a woman gives birth alone in a hospital in Beijing. This is the start of the unraveling of Su Lan, a brilliant physicist who has managed to erase her past by fighting what she calls the mind's arrow of time. 17 years later, however, she unexpectedly dies and it is her daughter Leah who inherits the contradictions and silence of her life. Leah, who grew up in America, takes her mother's ashes back to China and there Leah's memory are joined with those of two others. The last woman to have known Sulan before she left for America and Leah's father who she's never known. And so arises a portrait of Sulan. An ambitious scientist, an ambivalent mother, a woman whose relationship with her past shapes and ultimately unmakes Leah's own sense of displacement. The book says that it is a story of migrations, literal and emotional, spanning time, space and class. Little Gods is a sharp yet expansive exploration of the aftermath of unfulfilled dreams, an immigrant story in negative that grapples with our tenacious connections to memory, history and self. A huge thank you to Custom House for gifting me a copy. Then Mary Folio sent me a copy of her book called Everything is Figuratable. Uh, she saw my video uh, that I made for Elizabeth Gilbert and asked me if I wanted to review her book and obviously I said yes. This book is basically a guide to how to fulfill your goals. It says that inside you'll learn how to deal with criticism and imposter syndrome, why it's crucial that you strive for progress not perfection, how to bounce back from failure and and how to overcome a lack of time and money. I actually do read quite a few self-help books. The only thing is that the most popular ones are often at times written by men and so a lot of situations are not very applicable for myself both as a woman and uh, specifically as a woman of colour. So um, it's very interesting to, to have this book now and see if there's anything that I can learn from it, which I'm sure there will be. So a huge thank you to Mary for gifting me this copy. Then Allway Press gifted me a copy of Daughters of Henry by Renny K. Amayo. This book is about how the gods left the earth after a gruesome war. The only remnants of these gods lie in a pair of twins called Nala and Sinai. Separated at birth, these goddesses are brought up believing that they're human. This book explores the epic journey of self-discovery as they try to find a path back to one another. It is so exciting to see so many fantasy books come out that are inspired by African culture. I mean, Children of Blood and Bone, A River of Royal Blood, uh, we have Kingdom of Souls as well, and, and Daughters of Henry. It's just amazing to see your own culture in books like these. Then Berkeley gifted me a copy of The Antidote for Everything by Kimberly Martin. This book is about a urologist called Georgia who works at a hospital with her best friend Jonah who is a medicine doctor. When Georgia leaves the country for a medical conference, Jonah shares startling news. The hospital intends to fire a doctor who offer their services to transgender patients. These friends are hugely disturbed by the hospital's action, so they decide to concoct a plan to persuade the board from going ahead with this decision. But when the strategy spirals out of control, Jonah and Georgia face way more than just the loss of their career. I first saw this book on the Instagram account of my friend Beth, B is for books, and uh, the first thing that obviously caught my eye was this stunning cover, but then reading about the story, I was just so eager to get a copy as well. 
Now the last book I'm really excited about is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. At least I think that's how you pronounce Cerulean. Now our main character is Linus, a caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth. He is tasked to find out whether or not six dangerous magical children are likely to bring on the end of the world. Bring in Arthur, the master of the orphanage, who will do anything to keep his children safe, even if that means that the world will burn and his secrets will come to light. The book says that the house in the Cerulean Sea is an enchanting love story masterfully told about the profound experience of discovering an unlikely family in an unexpected place and realising that family is yours. Thank you so much Tall Forge for gifting me a copy, I am so, so excited. Well, those are all of the books that I wanted to talk about today. Please do let me know if you would like to see more of these type of videos. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.